Hi and welcome to another video by me, Joe Unwin, also known as Flow Joe. Today I'm going to show you how to cancel from one to a thousand running flows at the same time so that you don't have to go through and individually click and cancel each one of them. Now this may have happened because you've got in a loop where you're triggering a flow, it's changing something which is then triggering it and keeps going and going and going or something else has happened where your flow has run hundreds if not thousands of times and you need a quick way of cancelling these rather than spending hours yourself cancelling them. And you may not want to go through the whole trying to stop it, deleting the flow, making a duplicate, because sometimes it does work, sometimes it doesn't. Well, I'm going to show you the most effective way to cancel that, those flow runs easily and through just a simple flow that you can manually trigger. And the best thing is you can actually target any environment with any flow so you don't actually have to move this into production. You can leave it on your dev environment and still cancel flow runs. So how does this get built then and how do we start? Well, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create a manual trigger and you're going to want to have two inputs. You're going to want to have the environmental ID and then you're going to want to have the flow ID. Now these are just going to be strings, so just put please enter your environmental ID and please enter your uh, flow ID so that when this flow triggers, it's going to request uh, the user to put in an environment ID and a flow ID. Now, if you was moving this flow between environments, you could, you could automatically get the uh, environment ID and populate it yourself. That's fine. But for me personally, I prefer to keep this flow in a dev environment so that it doesn't end up going into production or anything like that. And you can then manually do this and access all of your environments and cancel your flow. So personally, I believe this is the best way of doing it. But obviously that is your decision to make. So what do we do next then? We need to use this invoke and HTTP request to actually get the flow runs. Now, when you first launch this, you're going to get a different screen. Now, I'm just going to pull up some uh, text information. You're going to get requested the base source URL. And what you need to do is you need to enter this HTTPS um, uh, colon slash slash API dot flow dot Microsoft dot com slash. You need to put that in there. I'm going to put all of this in the description so you'll be able to copy and paste it. Don't worry. I'm just uh, highlighting what you need to do. Then they're going to ask you for the Azure AD resource URI. And again, you're just going to want to put this URL into um, that. And then you're going to put, click next. And that's going to create a connection for you. And then what you're going to see, you're going to see this. Now you need to then select the method get. And we're going to then manipulate this URL request. Because what that's doing is it's targeting the API for the flow uh, runs on Microsoft. Um, it's going through the environment and we're going to pass the environment ID in. It's going through the uh, flow ID and then it's requesting the flow runs uh, where the status is equal to running. So let's go back to our text. What you're going to do is you're going to use this URL and I'm going to obviously paste it into the description So just copy and paste this, but we're going to replace this environment ID and this flow ID with the uh, manual trigger requests up here, the inputs we've got up here. So as you can see, I've got the text body um, of text and then the text body of text one. And this is essentially saying the environment ID and then flow slash the flow ID. So then what will happen then is any um, flow runs on this environment with that flow ID will come back and we'll have a list of all of the flow runs. So let's say there's a thousand, it will come back and we'll have a thousand runs back and we'll have a list of all of our runs. But what we need to do is we need to be able to make sense of the data that comes back to us because what's going to happen is it's going to come back to us in a JSON array and it's not going to be mapped to anything. You're just going to have, if we wasn't mapping this anywhere, you would just have body uh, come back from this. What's body? How do we get access to the data, etc.? So what we're going to do then is we're going to pass JSON the active flow runs. So whatever we get back here, we're going to pass it. 
So um, what we'll do is we'll pass the body in and then we need to generate a, a schema from a sample. Now what I did to get my schema first is before I added all of this stuff here, the pass JSON and the condition, etc. I just run this with just the manual trigger and the invoke and HTTP request so that I could get what was coming back and then I use, copy and pasted that into my generate sample to generate that. Now I'll put this uh, schema uh, sample in the description again so that you can just use that but if you wanted to actually do it yourself you could just run this copy the information and generate the schema yourself. So now we have a schema of the data returned of all of the active flow runs what we need to do is we need to check to see if there are actually any flow runs because if there are we don't want to go through the whole apply to each step and everything we just want to stop there so what I've done is I've said is the length of the value of the uh, output of the past JSON greater than zero so does the JSON array contain uh, one or more items if it doesn't then we um, uh, will stop okay so now what's going to happen is it's going to come into here yep it's greater than zero so we've got one or more run and then we're going to cycle through each of those runs so we have an apply to each we have the value of the past JSON come in so we're having each um, object in the JSON array we're going to be cycling through and each object is a flow run so all this is doing to recap is we've passed the information from the HTTP request into past JSON it's broken it down into data that we can digest and then we're going to have essentially if you think about Dataverse we're going to have rows of runs of um, Power Automate flow runs so we need to cycle through each one of those and cancel them individually so we've used an apply to each and we've used the value of the past JSON so that we can cycle through each individual run and then we use the cancel flow run now if you put management into the action search you'll see the power automate management section you can click on the cancel flow run you simply pass the environment ID through and how you do this is rather than using a drop down you could click on add dynamic content and then you just uh, scroll through and select environment ID from your trigger and do exactly the same for the flow and then the run ID is the name so the output of the past JSON is just name and that is the run ID of the flow so at this point then we're cycling through each one and cancelling it so how are we going to demonstrate this then well what I'm going to do is I've actually got a flow that I've created just as an example to hold the flows running so it's got a 10 minute delay um, and a manual trigger so if I run this and and I've got that done so now you can see I've got a test running right if I run it again you can see I've got two running if I run it again I've now got three running so that's got a 10 minute timer all it's doing is it's just got a manual trigger with a 10 minute delay and that's all the flow is doing it's waiting 10 minutes and then it'll stop but I'm doing this to simulate that there are flow runs and I need to cancel them so you can imagine that there could be a thousand of these right that's just cycling through and we need to get rid of them but what this allows me to do then is it allows me to then run our test and if I click test on our flow that we've just created it's going to request our environment ID and our flow ID so where do we get this from then well if you look at this flow that I'm running these uh, test ones on at the top here in the URL you can see environment slash and up until the next slash before solutions that is our environment ID so I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to paste it into there next we've got the flow ID so where do we get the flow ID from well it goes environment slash solutions slash flows um, and then it has the details section so where it says flows slash you want to highlight that to the next slash 
and that's the GUID of the flow. So if we come back into here, we pass that into our flow ID, and then if we click run flow now, what that's going to do is it's going to go get all the flow runs, it's going to pass the information, it's going to run our check. We saw that it was we did actually have more than one flow run. And then it's going to come into here and it's going to go through and cancel each one. So you can see there's three here. So what it's done is it's gone through, it's passed the environment ID, the flow ID, and the run ID, cancelled that. Then it's gone into the next one. Environment and flow ID stay the same, but the run ID is different. Again, we go into the next one. You can see the run ID is different again. So if we come back into this flow where we have all these running ones and I refresh now, they've all been cancelled. And that's how easy it is to actually cancel loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of flow runs with a simple flow created to do the task for you. If you have any questions, hit that like button and leave the comment below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And if you require any more help with Power Automate, check out flowjo.io for your Power Automate needs. Thank you for joining me on this video. I hope it helps and I'll see you next time.